Springs did not factor in the decision on Friday. Ultimately, Marissa McCann got the win in relief for Missouri. First pitch to Kendra Falby is fouled away. And we are underway at 2.02 locally. It is 83 degrees and sunny. Tim Walton has made uh, minimal changes to his starting lineup. Mia Williams back in at second base with Faber Brown playing first, no longer pitching. Katie Kessler moves down from the seven slot to hit ninth. Quickly 0-2 on Falby, who has been down in the count time and time again in this series. One for eight with a couple of strikeouts this weekend. One ball, two strikes to count. Tim Walton in his uh, 19th season as Florida's head coach. And of course, has never been swept by Missouri. The Gators have never been. Feels like a big afternoon for his team trying to respond. Florida has scored in the first inning of each of the first two games in this series. Gators went up 2 0 on Friday, 2 0 again on Saturday. In each case, Missouri has come from behind to win. Colby stays alive. But to that point, Maddie, it does feel like the pressure is in some ways more on Florida than it is on Missouri, even though the Tigers are trying to do something they've never done in program history because the Gators just flat out need a response. Right. The Florida Gators cannot afford to be swept, especially for postseason reasons. I'm um, trying to maintain that ranking there in that nine spot and they cannot lose to this Missouri Tiger team today. Falby went around and Krings has a strikeout to open the game just as she did getting Falby on strikes uh, or rather retiring Falby back on Friday. A beautiful change up here from Lauren Krings. If you take a look, she spins this ball down right at the kneecaps and Falby is unable to hit this pitch. Ball one to Skylar Wallace, who has struggled this weekend. One for seven with a double on Friday. She's added a walk and has struck out once. And it's coming off a uh, two for ten series against LSU as well. Uncharacteristic for her. Larissa Anderson's Tigers now back to 500 in SEC play at seven and seven. Just got her 200th win as Mizzou's coach on Wednesday against Drake. She's added two more so far this weekend. And now looking for Missouri's first sweep of Florida in front of uh, another likely record-setting crowd after more than 3,600 in the ballpark to set the single-game record on Saturday. If uh, the number is a little over 1,800 today, it'll set a new weekend record. And certainly, based on the eye test, it looks like it's going to be a lot more than 1,800 in the ballpark this afternoon. Three and one on Wallace. Interesting to watch a player like this, Maddie, because obviously with her experience and her production and her career, the track record she has, she's not going to push. She's not going to get outside of herself or get flustered. At the same time, she has to be a little bit frustrated with how this has gone. Popped up for Laird and two away. The struggles just sort of continue for her, even though she's making contact, just not squaring it up. Right. To your point, Nate. Skylar Wallace, probably one of the most disciplined players in Division I softball right now, and certainly in the SEC. Um, has a really great eye up to bat, especially in that last at bat, but is just not squaring up those pitches that Lauren Krings is leaving over the plate. Wallace now two for 18 over the last six SEC games, counting this one. Here's Corby Otis, and she takes high. Florida relied pretty much entirely on the top half of its lineup in yesterday afternoon's game. Didn't get a lot of production from the bottom, which has often been true, but maybe the bigger problem is not getting as much production as they've been spoiled with from that top half. 400 hitters, 1,000 plus OPSs up and down this lineup. Timely hitting is really going to be key for this Florida team today. Like you said, Nate, they're going to need more production out of the bottom half of that order, especially when that top part gets on base. Hey, 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 
Otis has three hits this weekend and eight trips, including a double. She and Reagan Walsh were the standouts on Friday. Jocelyn Erickson certainly yesterday. Lauren Krings looking for a 1-2-3 inning, something that eluded her on Friday. And what was kind of a funky game. And it continues to elude her with a two-out walk issued to Otis. What are we looking for from uh, Lauren Krings today, Maddie? Yeah, like we talked about earlier, Krings is going to have to use both sides of the plate. Her curveball is really her go-to. She's going to try to throw that on the outer half to righties, inside to lefties. But she has got to get it on the inner part of the plate and throw a backdoor curve if she wants to be effective today. So far, though, it looks like she is throwing her rise ball a little bit more than what we saw on Friday night. Here's Jocelyn Erickson. She takes high for a ball. Obviously, you know what it's like to pitch multiple times in a series against a, a lineup of this caliber. How important is it to do something different? Maybe, like you said, using that rise ball a little bit more, just something to throw a new wrinkle at hitters when you see them for a second or third day in a series. Right. I think after a hitter sees you, especially in the SEC, the scouting report is out. They know exactly what to expect. So making sure that you're just on top of your game and using all of your strengths, especially on day two, is really the key. 2-0 and on the uh, Gators transfer backstop. Spent last year at Oklahoma. Has been, I think, safe to say the best all-around catcher in the country this year, her sophomore season. A surprise omission from the starting lineup on Friday. There was no specific reason given for that. Emily Wilkie started behind the plate and took one at bat. Erickson pinch hit for her in the middle innings. Second time that sixth slot in the lineup came around and played the remainder of the game. She was in there from the jump yesterday. Got a couple of hits in game two, including a homer and a double. For more on Erickson, let's go down to Grace. Yeah, guys, you mentioned her dominant performance on offense just now, but her performance behind the plate is also incredible. She ranks fifth nationally in RBIs, and then as a catcher, she catches, she's caught 10 of 11 base stealers this year, only giving up one stolen base. It is a key part of her game. She's in defensive run saved, the best player in the entire country, catcher or otherwise. Did make just her second error of the season in yesterday's game. That's muscled out to left. Dodge on the move, and the side is retired. Frings works around a two-out walk. Florida nothing. It has in each of the two prior games in this series. The only change from Friday's lineup was uh, flipping Ebriscato and Crenshaw 6-7. and seven. They stay in that order today. Jenna Laird is uh, having her way against Florida again. Not only three for six in this series with three runs batted in, but she's uh, eight for her last 16 against Florida because she went five out of ten and scored five runs in the series in Gainesville last March. Had the two-run double that tied the game for Missouri in the bottom of the second yesterday. That was her first extra base hit in 14 SEC games. Obviously not a big power hitter, especially the second half of her career, but still a surprise to see her go more than half of conference play without a single extra base hit. Leonard had 13 homers as an underclassman. None in the last uh, two years. Larissa Anderson attributed that to some back issues that Laird has dealt with throughout her career. Said sometimes it's just about contact. Jenna certainly can still do that. Into center, Falby has room, and there's the first out. Brings up Alex Honnold, another Tiger who killed Florida last year in Gainesville. Had a couple of homers, six RBIs. Chris Anderson told us that an indicator that Honnold is getting back to her best is when she takes pitches quietly and with authority. That seemed like a good take on that very first pitch. I 
Donald herself had the big RBI double yesterday, gave Mizzou the lead. There is a certain stoicism about her in the box. Goes full on Honold. Great takes there from Alex Honold, not letting Rothrock throw her anything borderline that she's going to swing at. She's making her really bring these pitches over the plate. <laughs> Rothrock has been so heavily used this year, close to a strikeout per inning, but those inning numbers. Massive for anyone, let alone a freshman. Honnold drills it. Center field. Ball beyond the run. Leaps to make the catch. Kendra Falby had that great over-the-shoulder grab in Friday's series opener. That one maybe even better. That was an amazing catch from Falby. She runs back to the wall, makes a jumping catch over the shoulder. Probably one of the harder plays to do in softball, in my opinion. Go making a running catch back towards the wall. Looks like Keegan Rothrock was loving that play from her center fielder. And I would think from a pitcher standpoint, especially if what Rothrock has been thinking is, I need to throw more strikes. Having a play made that behind you in the first inning has to be encouraging because it allows you to pitch to a little bit more contact and try to avoid those free bases. Right, especially as a freshman, it can be hard to understand the balance of throwing it over the plate, but not throwing it too good over the plate. Um, so it gives her the comfortability and the freedom to really spin her pitches up there and know that her defense has her back. 2-0 to Maddie Gallagher. You know, we talk a lot about what a tough adjustment it can be, especially for someone as decorated a high school player as Keegan Rothrock, the 2022 National Gatorade Player of the Year when they start suffering through adversity, maybe even in their first fall, pitching to their own hitters, let alone when they get in the SEC. But I would think if there's any upside to that, it's you also have SEC caliber defenders behind you. Right, she's doing a great job, and she's probably learning from every single mistake that she makes, whether that's a hit batter or a walk. She's really gaining great experience to go into postseason for the Florida Gators. There is a two-out walk issued to Maddie Gallagher. Florida pitchers combined in this series 12 and two-thirds innings. That's the 16th walk or hit batsman of the weekend. It's allowed Missouri to score 11 runs on only 13 hits, and they only have one home run. It was a solo homer for Maya Dodge. There's somebody who has the potential to go deep in Kara Daly, but hitless in the series. How difficult is it, especially early in your career, to balance that mentally? I would think being out there and thinking, you know, if people are saying to you as a pitcher, just throw strikes, it's like, well, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, and like I said earlier, it can be a difficult balance, trying to spin your pitches, throw strikes, but make sure you don't throw the strikes too good. But today, Rothrock, her main focus has to be getting ahead in the count on these Missouri hitters. That was really the downfall the last two days for the Florida Gators. She's going to have to limit the free bases today, and she's going to have to work ahead in the count and compete. Swing and a miss. Daly just tipped it, but Erickson squeezes it to retire the side. Nothing on the board after one. Into scoring position, let alone across the plate. Lauren Kring's back to work after a rather smooth first inning, though it did still take 22 pitches. Reagan Walsh at the first pitch, chops it down the third baseline and into the corner. Walsh heads for second, and the relay is late. A leadoff double for Reagan Walsh, her second two-bagger of the series. She just put her head down and went, 
And even though Maya Dodge picked up the ball on the track before Walsh hit first base, she's able to dig in for a leadoff double. Yeah, I think that's a testament to Walsh's great base running. She's able to take this rise ball, drill it down the line, just takes off straight for second. Maya Dodge does a great job in the outfield getting that relay in, but Walsh does not hesitate running the bases, and she dives into second safely. So Walsh, the first runner into scoring position for either team. What makes this Florida team so special, Nate, is just the ability to not be happy with just one base. They're always looking to take the extra base, whether they think the ball got picked up too slow. Um, they're always judging and gauging the outfielder's arms as well, so they kind of have an idea of when that extra base opportunity is there. Ava Brown to center. Hano looks up. It's out of here. Second home run of the weekend for Ava Brown. Both of them in the second inning, and both have given Florida 2-0 leads. just leaves this pitch a little too up in the zone. Looks like a broken rise ball. Ava Brown does a tremendous job of hitting the ball where it's pitched and sending it over the right center field fence. She has gotten all of both of her home runs. One on Friday and this one today. Must be nice as a two-way player after having an outing she probably wasn't thrilled with in the circle yesterday to be able to take those frustrations out on the softball. Yeah, it is definitely a difficult situation to be a two-way two player, Nate, um, having to go from pitching yesterday and getting a start to also your team needs you every single time you step up in the box. It can definitely be mentally challenging. So the inning starts over after the Walsh double and Brown homer. And here's Ariel Kowalewski. Came in with just one SEC hit on the season, but she's had a couple of knocks in six at bats in this series. Florida has gone up 2-0 in the first two innings in all three games this weekend. And now they'll be tasked with holding that lead for the first time. And Missouri hadn't been much of a comeback team this year. In fact, the Tigers, when they allowed the first run, had only come back to win three times out of 11 games prior to this weekend. Now five at eight on the season when the opponent scores first after winning each of the first two in this set. One two from Krings. Drilled into right and down for a base hit. Hard contact from three straight Gators. Walsh double down on that pitch. Good weekend as well for Kowalewski. Can't be easy to have had the one for 21 SEC start that she did, but three hits and seven at bats in this series. She could build on it still. Speaking of a, a young screw who's had a tough start offensively to SEC play, Mia Williams fits that bill. Only got one at bat so far in this series. 0 for her last 15 in the SEC with eight strikeouts in that span. Did have a sacrifice in Friday's game as well. But a PGF All-American last year, Windermere Prep, and uh, MVP of the PGF All-American game. So still high hopes for her in this program. Also somebody who is praised for her defense at second base. Of course, pink shoes to fill there when you think about the defense that Hannah Adams played for this program. And Florida has a lot of really key freshmen in this lineup this year, gaining a lot of experience as they go through SEC play. And you don't expect to see Florida really ever, let alone a top 10 Florida team, relying to the degree they do on freshmen, both in the lineup and, of course, in the circle. Yeah. 
They were in the transfer portal for some more experienced pitchers. Had some close shaves. They were in the running for some big names. In the end, they've had two freshmen carry almost the entire load. Just inside, ball four. Williams works a payoff pitch. What? Two Gators on, nobody out. Wants it back to the circle. Krings wants to go to third, and they got her. Ambitious decision from Lauren Krings to throw to the shortstop, Laird covering at third, and they beat Kowalewski by inches. A great heads-up play from Lauren Krings here. Not easy to do. She has to turn her back to the runner to field this bunt and make a good throw. So not always super aware where that runner's in, but a great heads-up play. I'm sure Kara Daly was calling for the ball. A really hard play for Krings to make there. Slap to Daly, and the home plate umpire says foul ball. That's strike one on Falby. Home plate umpire making the call. That is Keith Kearney today. Bobby DeMeo at first, Stephen Gold at third. Another 0-2 count on Kendra Falby. I think nearly every at-bat she's had this weekend, she's fallen behind no balls and two strikes. Missouri taking a really aggressive approach against slappers. The mentality behind that is just that a walk is as good of a, as a hit for a slapper. The most damage a slapper is typically going to do is going to be a single. So they're making sure they're attacking. Krings gets a second strike out of Falby and a big second out of this inning. Florida has pushed to a cross, Matty, but it does feel in danger of squandering another opportunity. A beautiful pitch here from Lauren Krings. Like I said, pregame, Nate, Lauren is going to have to utilize that side of the plate, and she's doing just that, and that is what is making her effective against some of these Florida hitters, is going inside and then outside. Skylar Wallace now. Popped up to the shortstop, layered her last time. And we mentioned the good play by Krings on the would-be sacrifice bunt that Kistler laid down when she went to third to get the force for the first out of this inning just a couple of moments ago. But a really nice play as well by Jenna Laird, who had to rotate all the way over to get to third and then had to make kind of a typical low backhanded catch to secure that out. Had Missouri not gotten an out on that play and the base has been loaded with nobody out, the Tigers could have really been in trouble. Wallace tops it to the right side, handled by Gallagher, and the Tigers get out of the inning, but not before Florida cash. Very impressive for this Florida team. It's not every day that you get two freshmen in the circle. Hey to right, Kistler retires her. Like I was saying, Nate, not always typical to get two freshmen in the circle that are so powerful with little experience, and they're doing very, very well for this Florida team. Not a single inning came back from last year's team. Two freshmen added the grad transfer, Mackenzie Wooten. We've also seen a little bit of Olivia Miller. Freshman Southpaw in this series. Freshman against freshman, number seven against number seven. Rothrock misses high to Stefania Abrascato. An experience in that bullpen, Nate, for the Florida Gators is going to help as they work through this season towards the offseason. It really is a grind, especially when you're on the road as much as you are in the SEC. Yeah, Wooten has not pitched badly in her opportunities, getting a little bit more this week after she hadn't pitched for over a month. And we were talking about Kendra Falby making a couple of great over-the-shoulder catches in center. Wooten probably has the defensive highlight of the series when she snared a hip-high comebacker late on yesterday. Spinner from Abrascato, gloved cleanly by Kowalewski, and she retires the Missouri freshman for the second out. That was all freshmen on that play. Pitcher, batter, third baseman, and first baseman. Here's Julia Crenshaw.
Would be nice for Florida to get a shutdown inning from Rothrock here. She's really been showing off that rise ball today, making it very effective, bo effective both low and high in that zone. At the bottom of the second has been Missouri's moment so far in this series after falling behind in each of the first couple of games. Mizzou scored two in the second on Friday and four in the second yesterday. Just missed. Jocelyn Erickson trying to steal some strikes for Rothrock behind the plate. She is the best framer in the country according to the advanced stats. Two and two. Look at how far inside, outside some of those strikes are that she has stolen for her pitchers. That is amazing, Nate. And I think that speaks too to the effectiveness of how these freshmen have had so far this year. Having a good catcher behind the plate gives you a little bit more comfortability as well, knowing that I can make my pitches and Erickson is probably going to pull those pitches back over the plate. She te steals 159% more strikes than any other, than the average catcher in Division One. Rolled to third, off Kalowski, gloved by Wallace Geyer! Here's Corby Otis. She sends a line drive. Laced into center field. Arnold makes the catch. And more hard contact against Lauren Krings today, Matty. Yeah, we are going to have to see Krings tighten down like I've been talking about this entire game, Nate. She is going to have to make more pitches in the river. Explain the river to me. Sure. Um, so the river is just the part between the chalk and home plate. Um, sometimes teams will call that the black. She's going to really have to throw and make borderline pitches here against Florida if she wants to win. Finds the outside for a strike. Uh, Jocelyn Erickson in the cleanup spot for Florida. Missouri has had a lot of success out of the bullpen in the first couple of games in this series. Marissa McCann carrying that load. Taylor Pinnell had the save in the seventh inning yesterday. Roller to first. Hey, has to get to the bag and is there on the dive. Abby, hey, someone new to this Missouri lineup. Hasn't been the mainstay main first baseman, but I think she's earning her spot here. Nate does a tremendous job. Heads up play, knows exactly how much time she has to get back to the bag makes the decision to lay out and saves a base runner from this Missouri team. Chopper to short, kicks off the backhand stab of Laird. Walsh heading for second. Laird's throw is late. Uncharacteristic misplay for Jenna Laird in the first place on a tough short hop, and then maybe just a little bit slow to track it down in shallow left, and Walsh aggressively takes the extra base for the second time today. Yeah, Jenna Laird. Tries to short hop this ball, does it unsuccessfully. Not something we typically see from this Golden Glove shortstop. Um, Walsh, again, with great base running, is always looking to take that extra base, and she was able to swipe second. And it brings up Ava Brown, who with Walsh at second base in the second inning, homer to center. Her 10th of her freshman campaign. Six of them in 15 SEC games. That went in the book as a double for Reagan Walsh. Suppose it's tough to put it in any other way because you're not going to call that an error on Jenna Laird. It's a tricky play on the backhand, and it's not a foregone conclusion. Even if she does glove it, she's going to be able to throw Walsh out from the hole. Fair to say, I suppose that's beyond an ordinary effort. And then once it kicks away, obviously not an error just to have to chase down the ball. So Walsh gets a second double. That one may be a little bit fortunate on her part, but she did well to dig it out. Swing and a miss by Brown. 
Chase the rise ball, and she strikes out to end the inning. Ford early again today in this one, but you guys held them scoreless that last inning. What's it going to take from your pitching staff to keep that up the rest of this game? I mean, we got to keep the ball off the heart of the plate. Like, then that was the summer thing that I explained to Krings. Like, the ball is belt high, and if it's belt high, they're going to hit it really hard, and that's obviously what they do. So we got to either work bottom of the zone or the top of the zone. You guys have trailed early in every game so far this series, but you've proven to be a mentally tough team that can battle back. How do you do that again today down the stretch? You know, as long as we have opportunities and we have outs left, I mean, we, we got to get people on base. I mean, we're being hitless right now, so we got to be able to hit the ball and, and hit it where they're not because we're having some really good contact. It's just right at them right now. Thanks, Coach. You got it. Larissa Anderson joining Grace. Thank you very much. And... Uh, I think it's safe to say, Maddie, you know one or two things about softball because what I heard about the pitching was pretty much what you've been telling us the last inning or two. Yes, I agreed 100% with what the coach Anderson just said. Krings is going to have to get that ball off the heart of the plate, which is just the middle part of that zone. So Maya Dodge leads off the home third for Missouri. Safe to say that she has heard the message about attacking early in counts. Third straight at bat in which she swung at the first pitch. and. First time she hasn't made hard contact. She had her first career SEC extra base hit. That solo home run to make it 5-2 Mizzou yesterday. And then smacked a line drive of the first pitch of her next at bat. But unfortunately for her, it caught in Wooten's glove. Check Swinton, strike three called. And Keegan Rothrock has settled in really nicely this afternoon for a second strikeout. A great pitch by Keegan Rothrock here. This is exactly what we're talking about. She is not throwing that ball over the heart of the white. Spinning a rise ball up to Maya Dodge that just barely clips the plate, and that's what's really making Rothrock so effective today. She's allowed the one Missouri base runner. That was a two-out walk to Maddie Gallagher back in the first inning. And now deals with Kaylee Langer, who has a 5.05 on base percentage for the year. Certainly not an easy out of the nine spot. Langer is one for three officially this weekend. She's also been hit by three pitches. Two of them by Rothrock. On Friday, we talked to Tim Walton during yesterday's game, and, and he mentioned with both of his pitchers, Rothrock and Ava Brown, a couple of freshmen, as we talked about, just hitting. Little ruts as we approach the midway point or past the midway point of SEC play, more like two thirds of the way through the year overall. Do you recall that stage in your career, Maddie, being a younger pitcher and, and how this part of the season maybe could result in, in just a little rut like that? Definitely, Nate. I think as a younger pitcher, it's hard to really know what the grind is like before you're going through it. Um, there's a lot of travel involved, obviously, especially when you get to SEC play, a lot of time on the road, and that all takes a toll on how tired you are. Um, and being a freshman, it's just learning how to push through that and still continue to be effective in all of your outings. Langer chased that one, but has to protect with two strikes. There have been some 99s who have had success in that nine hole for Missouri. Abby George, who uh, slapped off the left side, also had Couple of really good average and OBP years. Likes to get right in there on top of the plate. No surprise for somebody who's been hit by 16 pitches this year. Top five in Division One. Roth Rocks 2 2.
that ever annoy you, a batter standing a certain way in the box, especially really close to the plate? Definitely, and Rothrock does a really great job of still managing to get inside to these hitters. Haley Linger has been known to get hit by a pitch a time or two, and we've seen that this weekend. Um, but she does a great job of working in anyways. Back-to-back -back Ks for Rothrock, who's punched out three Tigers in the ball game. Keegan Rothrock continues to make her pitches here in this game. That is a pitcher's pitch in that count, not even close to the plate, throwing it down and away. A little bit of off speed, and Kaylee Linger is fooled. Here's Jenna Laird, top of the Missouri lineup. Laird flied out to Falby in center back in the first inning. Missouri really hasn't squared up Rothrock much at all this entire series. It was those nine free bases that hurt her in five innings in change on Friday. On the ground is short. Wallace off her heel. Strong throw to get Laird. And it's a second Monday in Tuscaloosa and stay for the story of that 2012 team. Two runs in the second inning for Florida on a two-run homer from Ava Brown. Eight, nine, and one, or uh, rather seven, eight, and nine, I should say. Due up in this fourth inning for the Gators. Kowalewski to be followed by Williams and Kistler. Kowalewski now three for seven in the series. Easily her best so far of her young SEC career. Overall, very good numbers. Softly hit to Laird at short, handled cleanly, and there's one away. Not so much of the wackiness in this game, what we've seen in the last two, particularly in the series opener on Friday. Now Mia Williams, who walked on a tight 3-2 pitch back in the second. Did you pitch any differently against the bottom third of the order, or is that a recipe for getting yourself in trouble? I definitely pitched a little bit more aggressive. I know I knew that those were very important outs, um, people that weren't necessarily going to do as much damage to me as the, the upper part of the order. Um, so I was always trying to make sure that I was spinning the ball and working those hitters as effectively as I could. A couple of aggressive hacks from Williams, nothing in two. Crane's doing a little better job here of getting to your point, Nate, ahead in the count on this lower part of the order. Florida has four hits off of Krings through three and a third. Three of them for extra bases. Giving up home runs was a much bigger issue for Krings in the past in her career. She shored that up for the most part, although she has allowed two off the bat of Ava Brown this weekend. Ava Brown has definitely been the player that's done the most damage to Missouri and kind of that player that you don't want to let beat you if you're Lauren Krings. 2-2 again. Williams lunges for it into right. Langer shades her eyes and in front of the track the second out.
Kring's doing a much better job here of not covering the white. Nate, just to Coach Anderson's point, she throws that pitch on that outer part almost close to the chalk, and she has been more effective here making adjustments against this Florida team. Ball one to Katie Kistler, who reached on a fielder's choice on that would-be sacrifice bunt back in the second inning when Kring's cut down the lead runner at third. Lifted into left center. Honnold over at a 1-2-3 inning for Krings to complete the second trip down Florida's lineup card. You guys have had some solid production on offense here so far today. Ava Brown knocked her second homer of the series. What have you liked from your team at the plate here so far? Yeah, I think we've been getting runners on base. Obviously, uh, two runs the past two days hasn't been enough, uh, you know, to hold us. But I definitely like the way, especially Reagan Walsh has had a really good weekend for us consistently. We need that top of the lineup next inning to get on base, get things started for us. And you mentioned your team taking a 2-0 lead early in in all three games what's it going to take to finish this one here today but it's really just about sustaining it you know continue to make adjustments and you know eventually they're going to they're going to have a little bit of a run we've got to play better defense communicate a little bit better but i always go back to where we got to be on offense we just got to continue to put runs on the board we've had base runners and opportunities we just haven't had a haven't had the hit to get it done thanks coach thank you thank you very much grace and coach walton ava brown's two run homer the only runs on the scoreboard at the midway point this afternoon Two, three, and four due to bat for Missouri. Still looking for its first hit against Rothrock. And there's a strike on Alex Honnold to be followed by Matty Gallagher and Kara Daly. But this is nothing new because Keegan Rothrock held Missouri without a hit through five and a third innings before Stefania Abrascato bounced one through the left side on Friday. And there's a ground out handled cleanly by Williams. Yeah, Rothrock is having a phenomenal day today. Much better than what we saw on Friday, Nate. She is using all of her spots and throwing that rise ball to all locations, and she has been very effective so far. Not giving up a ton of free bases either. So here's Matty Gallagher, the only Tiger to reach against Rothrock this afternoon. Gallagher worked a two-out walk back in the first inning. Since then, Rothrock has retired nine straight. And if she and Brown could get out of this rut. Bounce through the right side. There's Missouri's first hit. But if Florida gets more of what they're seeing today from Rothrock and what they have seen from Ava Brown, not to mention that Skylar Wallace is also slumping right now. Those things start to change. This is still a very dangerous ball club. It had won four straight SEC series to start the league campaign for a reason. Daly didn't get all of it. Mia Williams on the dive. Williams had that misplay on Friday, Maddie, that went as a hit for Gallagher, but one she probably would like to have back. That was a heck of a play for the freshman. Yeah, those can sometimes be the most scary plays to make, Nate. That ball is not traveling very far, and it's kind of in no man's land in between the pitcher, Rothrock, and Williams, but she comes up with that play on the dive. Here's Abby Hay, who went after the first pitch in her first at bat today, lined out to Kistler in right field. He has a pair of singles and a walk in the series. Two out of seven. Both of those hits came yesterday. Seems like she's seeing the ball better and better. Rothrock trying to put up a fourth straight zero to start the ball game. Keep her Gators on top by two, trying to salvage something. Kind of a unique 0-2 pitch there. Still not afraid to get inside on Abby Hay. 
typically you see pitchers on 0-2 counts working away from the hitter. Top softly to third. Kowalewski unloads in time to beat Hay by a step. And the inning is over. Matty Gallagher today. And Missouri 7-7 seven and seven in the conference with the two wins to start this weekend. One ball, no strikes on Florida's leadoff hitter Kendra Falby, who will be followed by Skylar Wallace and Corby Otis at the top of the Gators lineup. Lauren Kring's third time through to second. Gallagher makes the play. Maddie, are you surprised to see Larissa Anderson sticking with Lauren Krings even against the top of the Gators lineup for a third time? Um, I'm not necessarily. Krings, this is her game to lose. She's a senior. She's been the mainstay ace for the last two years. Um, so I think she's going to want a little bit more action from Florida before she pulls Krings. Um, but she always knows that she has McCann up and ready to go because we saw her be so effective yesterday. I think she will pull the trigger a little bit quicker if she sees Lauren start to get hit pretty hard. And to be fair, Krings has handled the top of the order effectively so far today. That was the first time Falby's made contact. She's 0 for 3. Wallace has made soft contact on the infield a couple of times. She's 0 for 2. And Otis has a walk and a line out behind her. In fact, yesterday it was all the top four spots in the lineup doing the damage for the Gators. Those top four Florida hitters today are a combined 0 for 8 with a walk. Walsh and Brown have done the damage in the five and six holes today. They have three out of the four hits, a couple of doubles and a homer. One and two on Skylar Wallace, who uh, has that great connection now that she's been in Gainesville for a while with Tim Walton. And Grace, they're going to get to continue that, aren't they? Yeah, that's right, guys. So Skylar Wallace, as you mentioned, struggling here this series, but is a powerful offensive player, and she's just been selected to USA Softball's Japan All-Star Series roster. And Jocelyn Erickson will also be joining her. Meanwhile, Coach Wal Walton will help lead USA Softball this summer as an assistant coach in the World Cup. Pretty cool for uh, both of them to be part of USA Softball, plus Jocelyn Erickson, who uh, waits in the hole. Krings 1-2. Off the glove of a diving Abby Hay, and Skyler Wallace has her second hit of the series, just her third in her last six SEC games. She'll take him any way she can get him right now, Maddie. Yes, Skylar Wallace made an adjustment at that at bat, and she was able to drill it through that 3-4 hole. Really not much else Abby Hay could have done. And Skylar Wallace is on. Skylar Wallace off the plate just a little bit. Looks like she was waiting for Lauren Krings to throw that curveball that she typically does to that inner part of the plate. So she backed off and she was able to drill that pitch to the 3 4 hole and hit it where it was pitched. And of course, Skylar Wallace is the SEC's leading base stealer. Kirby Otis has good speed in her own right. But Wallace has swiped 26 bags this year on 27 attempts. Florida came into the weekend, tops in the SEC in steals, and having allowed the fewest. The Gators were plus 75 on stolen bases. 78 swipes and just three against them. Probably one of the best base running teams, and they have been for quite some time. And then Otis in the three hole, who packs so much punch, just like Wallace does, has speed that's comparable. She was a, a high school sprinter, Corby Otis, has school records in Colorado in the 100 and 200 meter dashes. Larissa Anderson out for a conversation with a count at, in the history of these programs. Wallace on the move, Otis smacks it back up the middle. Wallace stumbled over second and has to hold up. Skyler was headed for third, but it looked like her right toe just clipped the edge of the bag and caused her to stumble. More hard contact from Otis, who's rewarded with a hit. The Gators could have easily had first and third. Wallace unlucky. 
Krings again continuing to cover a little bit too much of that white. Didn't quite get it in on the hands of this hitter. Well, Wallace stumbles over second base and trips. Otherwise, she was headed to third. So here's Jocelyn Erickson, and still Krings continues. Marissa McCann has been up in Missouri's bullpen. We imagine she's ready to go now. And now Sierra Harrison up as well. Yesterday's starter, who has not appeared twice in an SEC series yet this season. She's been just Mizzou's game two starter. Erickson down the line and twisting foul. We saw the Missouri pitching coach, Molly Jacobson, down there on the phone, probably relaying something into the dugout about which pitcher is looking better, either Sierra or McCann, to take on these Florida hitters today. One ball, one strike. Erickson, right center, no man's land, it's down. Wallace waved home, hodled bobbles, and that will allow Wallace to score and Otis to move to third. RBI single from Jocelyn Erickson, and it's 3-0 Gators in the fifth inning. Lauren Krings again continuing just to throw these balls too good to these Florida hitters. Does not get that ball off the plate enough, and that's going to result probably in a pitching change for this Missouri staff. Third time against the top of this floor with a run already across to stretch the Gators' lead to three. They have Otis at third base, Erickson at first. And the Tigers infield drawn in with one away. Walsh fisted into short center. Gallagher is there. No advance. The danger, Maddie, of pulling that infield in is you worry about a little bloop, much like that one. Had Walsh gotten another five feet on it, that could have been big trouble for Missouri. Yeah, Maddie Gallagher was shaded just slightly over up towards the middle, um, which gave, gave her a little bit of an advantage there. Um, and she's able to save a run against Florida. First time Reagan Walsh has been retired after a couple of doubles today. Three in the series, and you heard Tim Walton with Grace just last inning. Mentioned how well he thinks Walsh is swinging the bat. Ava Brown pops up the first pitch. Abby Hay had a drop pop up earlier, but gets that one. She's allowed just two Missouri base runners. And make it three as Stefania Abrascato is hit by the pitch to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning. See, Mizzou has not had a runner in scoring position yet in this game. The Tigers have had first base occupied three times. Maddie Gallagher walked with two outs in the first inning, then singled with one out of the fourth. Abrascato was the first time in five innings Mizzou has had the leadoff batter aboard. And the first time anyone other than Maddie Gallagher has reached base. It's the fifth batter Rothrock has plunked. And now nine innings in change in this series. And Danielle Blackston will pinch run for Abrascato. But as we mentioned, Florida is the toughest team in the entire country to run against. Erickson has allowed a grand total of one stolen base against her in 11 attempts. And there's a strike to Julia Crenshaw, who grounded out to short in her <laughs> only at bat so far. Gets away from Erickson and Blackston goes to second base. It'll likely be scored as a pass ball. And if it is, it'll be the first all season charge to Jocelyn Erickson after just her second error of the year yesterday. Now a pass ball. It looks like this rise ball just was missed by Erickson. Uh, bad timing on the catch, and it results in a pass ball here, and Blackson was able to swipe second. 
Crenshaw to right. Kistler is there. Blackston tags, and she'll move to third with one out. So that's a costly pass ball because now it sets up an opportunity for Missouri to score Blackston with an out. Not something we typically see out of Erickson. Goes after the first pitch again, bounces it to Wallace at short. That will score the run on a ground out. Six to three in the scorebook. Blackston comes in, another RBI for Maya Dodge. But I think Florida will take that, all things considered, Maddie. The lead goes from three to two, but now the bases are empty with two out. I think so, too. I think Walton is just looking for this Florida team to get out at this point. They've still got a two-run lead, so it was a good play there by Wallace. Kaylee Langer, Missouri's nine hitter at the plate. Langer struck out her first time in the third, getting just her second chance in the fifth inning. Fisted down the right field line. Kistler gets over, and that is the inning. So Missouri scratches out a run. A&M in Alabama, heading right into that Bama SB SEC storied on Monday night. A look back at the 2012 Alabama team that won the Women's College World Series for the first time in SEC history. Not as though the SEC is short of World Series titles already as it stands in recent years, Maddie, but you'd imagine those numbers are going to climb even faster with the additions of Oklahoma and Texas next season. At the moment, the top two teams in the country. One ball, one strike on Ariel Kowalewski. Bottom third of the order here against Marissa McCann, who retired Reagan Walsh and Ava Brown. Two strand gators on the corners in the fifth inning. Missouri got that run back, one apiece in the fifth for each team, but still a two-run advantage for Florida. And the Gators have out-hit Mizzou 7-1. to one. Could be playable. Crenshaw can't quite get there. Always going to be a difficult play. And it's 1-2 and two on Kowalewski. And Julia Crenshaw just a little bit late to recognize that this ball went up. Unable to find it in time. Tries to make a diving play. Another one popped up. This time it gets into the screen and you can hear Julia Crenshaw right into our microphone. Again, unable to identify that ball. Kind of a funny response there from Pup-ups. That one, nothing she could do about it. Two and two. And David's got to fix the mic. Got the thumbs up down there. Jason and David on the case. Out, 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 out. Appreciate our whole crew, not just audio, though we have to give them special shout outs. McCann's 2-2 again. Kowalewski foul up the line. It's been uh, largely the same group of folks bringing you the pictures. Jack and Jacob out there on cameras. There's Annie over the first base sign. Sam at high first. In the booth with us, that's Jack. And Joanne over at third. They have been responsible for everything you've seen all weekend long. Change up, just missed. They can't want that one. A beautiful change up here from McCann. You cannot ask for a better pitcher's pitch. Crenshaw tries to pull that ball up. It just misses below the kneecap, but the result is a ball. Now they're off speed into short center. Huddled on the dive. Alex Honnold continues to get phenomenal reads out there in center field. She does not hesitate to run in on, in on this ball, and she knows exactly when she needs to dive after it. 
Marissa McCann. So thankful for her to make this play. How about the success Mizzou has had developing center fielders, even for players who maybe didn't come in expecting to play center. Brooke Wilma's found a home there. Alex Honnold has done the same. The Missouri head coach, Coach Anderson, was a center fielder in her collegiate days of playing. Probably helps. She's known, it's a good point though, she's known as sort of the pitching guru, but center fielder by trade. One strike pitch to Mia Williams. Popped up back toward the screen and again off the screen before Crenshaw could get there. This time no mics were harmed. In general, Larissa Anderson runs a program that's about development. In some ways, it still has sort of the blueprint that made her successful at Hofstra at the mid-major level coming here. And she has plenty of kids on this team who weren't the highest touted recruits and who have developed year over year in a Missouri uniform. She does a good job of, of really looking at somebody's potential. And she has a few key things that she's looking for out of every position. High in the air to left. Dodge, two down. Because the other thing is, and there are always some, obviously anywhere you look in college sports now, there are going to be some transfers. Maddie Gallagher, former South Carolina Gamecock at second. Dodge, who just made that catch, former Northern Iowa Panther out at left. But not a lot of transfers on this team. Certainly Missouri does not rely on the high-profile kind of rental player who's just going to have one or two years. Right. And Coach Anderson there at Missouri does a great job of also recruiting Missouri kids. That's been a big initiative, initiative of her. I think we've got four or five of them on the field right now. Yeah, I think I remember her saying early years of her tenure that if she could dream up anything, the, the pie-in-the-sky dream would be to go to the World Series with a, a collection of Missouri kids. Abby Hay, ultra-local, Como kid out of Rockbridge High. Nothing in one on Kistler. McCann continues to work ahead. Tim Walton also has done an excellent job at Florida. He has a lot of Florida kids on that roster as well. Yeah, especially for the Diamond Sports, such a built-in advantage to be in one of those warm-weather states that produces talent the way Florida does. And such a smart coaching decision, too, to try to recruit a little bit more local. Keeps those kids from getting so homesick during season, during the grind. Into shallow center. This one will be easier for Honnold. Three flyouts. Marissa McCann just keeps putting them down. Or earlier this season, I should say, against LSU. By more than 1,000, Missouri has reset the record. Close to 10,000 people have come into the ballpark this weekend. We did miss the first pitch to Jenna Laird, so it's 0-2 on Missouri's shortstop leading off. 3-1 Florida to the bottom of the sixth. Into shallow left, a long way in for Otis, who makes the call and the catch. Maddie, this feels like a really big inning for Missouri. Rothrock already a third of the way through it with the top of the Tigers order against Rothrock for the third time. Right, and Rothrock is able to get through these three hitters untouched. Um, she's really paved the way for this Florida team to go ahead and get a win today. Honnold 0 for 2, a fly to center, ground out to second. Has made some really nice catches in center field this weekend. Maybe the best of the bunch, the diving grab at the top of this sixth inning. Foul ball, two and two. Honnold is one for nine in the series, but had that big go-ahead RBI double yesterday. Ultimately proved to be the game-winning hit. Missouri went on to win it five to two. Softly lined to second. Williams is perfectly positioned. Not bad contact by Honnold, especially having to protect with two strikes. 
but right at Williams and Rothrock has retired Laird and Honnold all six times she's faced that duo today. Maddie Gallagher is the only Tiger Rothrock has not got. Gallagher has Mizzou's only hit. A one out single in the fourth. She also walked back in the first. The only other Tiger to reach base was Stefania Averscato. She was hit by a pitch leading off the fifth and her spot ultimately came into score even if it was the pinch runner Daniel Blackston. Florida four outs away from salvaging something and considering the week the Gators have had Maddie because it's not just losing after taking two nothing leads in each of the first two games in this series they also had a lead on Wednesday and lost at home against South Florida their first midweek loss of the year into left for Otis started in moves over and she's there even if it's just salvaging the series salvaging the way for Mizzou yesterday more than 60 former players and coaches in attendance. McCann to Falby gets ahead with a strike on the Gators leadoff hitter. And six different decades were represented. You kind of commented to me, you know, it's there's not a lot in common between the softball of the 2010s and 2020s and the softball of the 70s and 80s. People are almost talking about two different sports. Right, a, a totally different game. A lot of evolution. And Every some of phase. That, yeah, and some of that was back, you know, at the start of Title IX. So um, some of those players, you know, that have gone back from programs in the 1980s really paved the way for women's sports. McCann's 1-1 one, one pitch. It's a good point because, you know, it's easy to sort of almost chuckle now at the idea of some of those players in the 70s and 80s playing softball here or at other schools in, you know, forget about a ballpark like this. They didn't really have a ballpark at all. Maybe they're just playing out in a, you know, an open area, an open field. Maybe not much beyond patchwork fencing. Probably not a lot of stands, but if they hadn't done that, the sport would never be here. Somebody had to play when there was a little less glitz, a little less glamour in order to build a $17.5 million ballpark like the one that we're in here, a $50 million ballpark like the one they opened in Norman this season. Bobby stays back and stays alive. A couple of strikeouts. And a ground out to second for Falby. They see Marissa McCann, who has retired all five Gators she's faced since coming out of the bullpen with two on and one out of the fifth. Six and a third scoreless innings of relief for McCann now this weekend. You made another interesting point to me, Maddie, about how even when you were pitching, if you weren't a starter for at least one game a weekend, it was almost impossible to be SEC Pitcher of the Week. Somebody like McCann, if she ends up throwing this weekend or in the future, seven, eight, nine innings over three games. Tough to think she couldn't be in the conversation. Right, and that's another point, Nate. The game of softball continues to evolve. A middle reliever was not that common um, 10 years ago, but now we're starting to see McKeon, who's able to throw three games in a weekend and pick up almost a game's worth of innings. She's gone six and a half innings so far, um, and she's done a great job taking on that role. And it felt like Larissa Anderson was at least a little ahead of the curve in that way, that she was always open to the idea of sort of piecing together a game with two, three different pitchers, playing matchups a little bit, trying to vary the looks. Bobby pops it up on the infield. Laird loves it, and a frustrating weekend continues for Kendra Falby. Falby now just one for 12 in the series after she carried in a six game hitting streak and had hit in 17 of her last 18 prior to this series. Here's Skyler Wallace, had a single and scored her last time in the fifth. She offered according to the third base umpire Stephen Gold. One for three after a pop up to short in the first and a ground out to second in the second.
But it's not just six and two thirds scoreless innings for McCann this weekend. It's six and two thirds, allowing just one base runner, a two out seventh inning double on Friday off the bat of Skylar Wallace, the only Gator who's reached against her. Corby Otis, who's on deck, did take McCann all the way to the wall in left field for the final out of the game Friday. Wouldn't have tied the game, but would have brought Florida within a run. One, two. Popped up on the infield. Daly called off by the shortstop, Laird. Left fielder number 33, Corby Otis. If you were Larissa Anderson, do you think this is the the role you like for Marissa McCann, even if she remains this dominant? Try to use her in a way that impacts two or three games out of a weekend, or would you be tempted to start her? Um, I like that she's able to throw in multiple games every weekend. I think that is a great thing for this Missouri staff, who's always utilizing multiple pitchers in every game. Um, the kid does deserve a start, obviously, with how great she's been as of late but I think we might continue to see her in this role. And you don't really know how a freshman might pan out in a starting situation um, mentally as well. First pitch ball, which has been rare from her this weekend, working against Corby Otis, who's had a great series. One for two with a walk in this game, and the one out was a line drive she tattooed into center back in the third inning. She has four hits in 10 trips. One of them a double, plus the walk this weekend. Tim Walton said Florida was the perfect fit for the Louisville transfer Otis, offered her everything she needs on and off the field. She takes the four-pitch walk, just the second base runner McCann has allowed in seven innings this weekend. As uh, Corby wants to go to med school and be a cardiothoracic surgeon. So she's got uh, a lot going on even outside of softball. And I'm impressed with how she has taken that, that transfer and that difference in the game between the ACC and the SEC. She's handled that transition very, very well. Tim Walton made a comment I mentioned yesterday about how he's learned to be a better Corby coach the last month, making sure they're communicating that the back and forth is, is good for her, that sometimes it doesn't have to be I talk, you do. It can be you talk and we do together, and that Gainesville can be that kind of place for a player. Erickson sends it into short left, dodges there, and the side is retired. The two-out walk does not hurt McCann. Six innings, one run on one hit. And she has a two-run advantage as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Katie Chester, the pinch hitter, snagged by Kowalowski, yeah. thrown from her knees. What a play by Kowalowski at third. What a great dive from Kowalowski, saving a hit in the 5-6 hole, and a great pick there from that new first baseman. That's Avery Gels, who just came in at first base. Defensive replacement for Ava Brown. So Katie Chester, the pinch hitter, went after the first pitch. It looks like we might have a Missouri challenge here, though everything looked good on the replay. The announcement is Mizzou is challenging the out call at first base. The only thing I can imagine is that they want to make sure Avery Gels. After further review, the runner is out. That. Katie Chester may be a little confused because uh, third base umpire Stephen Gold did start to make a safe signal, but obviously the out stands. So Florida two outs away from getting a win. What a great play by Kowalewski. We've seen some really good defense today. Mia Williams had that diving catch. Tendra Falby had the over-the-shoulder grab on the run back in the early innings. Alex Honnold's diving grab but I think that play might take the cake. Maybe for the whole weekend. <laughs> Hank
Hay is lined out to right, grounded out to third. And she calls time. Missouri still a bloop and a blast away, but the way the Tigers have looked against Rothrock today, it'd be tough to fancy their chances down to their final two outs. Abby Hay pretty far off the plate here. Rothrock trying to utilize that pitch on the outer half to try to get her to ground out. It's impressive considering how far she stands off the plate, Abby Hay, that she's been able to go the other way as effectively as she has. In fact, both of her hits in this series have gone to right. That might be a new adjustment from Abby Hay. Rothrock has thrown pretty heavily inside to her in her past at bats. Top back to the circle, handled by Rothrock. Two down. And Abrascato will come to the plate as the only Tigers separating Keegan Rothrock and Florida from a victory in the series finale. Maddie, we talked about it. This is a Florida team that obviously had a tough week, the midweek loss, then dropping the first two this weekend after having a lead. What does it tell you about the mental toughness of this Gators team to, to salvage something here on Sunday? Yeah, I think they understand the importance of the adjustments that they needed to make. It was not an option for this Florida team to go get swept in SEC play. Um, and they have been a totally different ball club today, defensively, offensively, and pitching. And although obviously Florida having won its first four SEC series would have come to Como hoping to win this one as well. Getting one out of three on the road against the top 15 team and one that came in top 10 in RPI, not so bad. Abrascato has grounded out to third and been hit by a pitch. Tim Walton, of course, still locked in, even with his Gators just a strike away. Rothrocks 1-2. And for Keegan Rothrock specifically, what a way to get out of that rut that Tim Walton said she and Ava Brown were in. Just one hit against her, three base runners. Just off the outer edge, 2-2. Two and two. What a great pitch there from Rothrock. A 1-2 count, not missing anything over the white, but giving Abrascato something that she has to think about swinging at. Abrascato's worked it back full after Rothrock got ahead, no balls, two strikes. Julia Crenshaw would be next if Abrascato can extend the ball game. To first, Gels is there. The side is retired, and Keegan Rothrock and the Florida.